Hi everyone, Sonia here, and you are watching Pouring with Sonia. So I recently watched Julie Cutts uh, Pouring Your Heart Out, and she did this beautiful ocean-themed pour. And she did a layered cup for one, and she did a dirty pour for the other. And I thought, what an interesting experiment for me to try myself. And so that's what I'm going to try. Also, uh, well, this one will just be the layered cup, flip cup, but I am going to try it with the coconut milk um, anti-breakage serum instead of the spot-on treadmill. So that'll be an interesting, um, kind of fun to see the different types of results. The other thing that's a little bit different, it's a little bit warmer out today, it's not snowing, so... I'm going to do four flip cups on this 16 by 20 and um, when it's a little warmer out and I can open the windows up and fan it out then I will spray my cups with a little bit of silicone lubricant just so that they the paint releases out of the cup better so I did that today there's just a very thin film of it it's not like shh. it's just real quick almost like you were going to spray um, some like a Pam into a muffin tin, okay, before you put your stuff in, just so it releases better. So those are a little bit different things I'm doing today. What I've done is mixed up, um, I'm using all acrylic student grade economy acrylic paints. I have raw umber. I also have a turquoise. And then I have kind of this tan that I made with by mixing raw umber and white. You can mix it to whatever proportions you like to get the color you want. I want kind of a sand color. And instead of having black as the contrast color, it's the raw umber as the contrast color. And then I mix up this really pretty turquoise, which is just phthalo blue and phthalo green mixed together. Roughly maybe two to one, maybe even a little, maybe a little more green than two to one, but however, whatever mix you want to get to get to the color that you like. However, blue or green or deep, dark color or whatever. So th that's it. That, and then I have the Artist Loft Flow Acrylic White. Um, I have two cups of the white and then one cup each of the color. So I'm going to get these out of the way because this 16 by 20 takes up almost all of my workspace and I need to have room for tilting. So what I'm going to do is actually, let me show you what I'm going to do. Because I don't want to make a mistake and get a big huge pump full of this coconut oil in. I'm going to put the coconut oil in a little cup here. And then I'm just going to use a little stick to drop some drops in. And I have, so the ratio of paint that I mix up for my canvases. I take the length times the width and then divide it by 16 because I'd rather have too much paint than not enough. If you don't have quite enough paint, I like a little bit less paint when I'm doing ring pours because I really want to stretch those rings out. But for a flip cup, I want a little extra paint because I don't want to have to overstretch the cells. And if you don't have enough paint, your cells get really stretched out um, and distorted. Mine might get distorted anyways, just based on the consistency. So let's talk about the consistency real quick. I'll just take the turquoise as an example. My pouring medium today is really simple. It's just glue and water. So what I have is 70% glue and 30% water as my pouring medium. That's it. And then I mix that in roughly one-to-one -one with my paints. So I'll start with maybe one-to-one -one, and then I wanna check the consistency. So I want this a little bit thick. Not quite as thick as for my ring pours. Ring pours I like kinda really thick cause I want a really crisp, thick line. But this, when I'm dropping it off, hopefully you can see that. It's leaving a little mound, not a huge mound. It's leaving a little mound before it drops down. It's not dropping straight down. 
And I mean, I, I actually even like it maybe a little bit thicker than that, but I didn't, I didn't get it that thick this time. They're all about that same consistency. And I think you can see better on the lighter colors. That's why I wanted to show you. Consistency is, you know, how thick your paint is, is half the battle, I think, if you're new to paint pouring. Um, and I'm just using the glue and water for a while, just because um, that's something probably pretty much everyone can find. Also, um, if you wanted to do some of this stuff with your kids during all of this isolation, it's probably easier to find glue at like a CVS than a... Uh, an amount of Floetrol. So this is Elmer's Glue All. That's the type that I use. And that's just glue and water. So I've done a couple videos now, simple things like a strainer pour and an egg carton pour that you could do with your kids at home to kind of keep a fun, creative spark <laughs> in their eyes. All right, so I put a little bit of the coconut serum in here and I'm gonna put about three drops Hopefully, so one, two, three, in that. One, two, three, in that. I'm even gonna put it in the white. One, two, three. So the only reason I put it in this little cup is because with these kind of squirt things, I was afraid I would get a huge squirt instead of controlled amount. <laughs> One, two, three. So I was saying my amount of paint is 16 by 20, the length times the width. One, two, oops, see that drizzled. That got a little bit extra, sorry. And then divide it by 16. Length times width, divide by 16. That's how much paint I want for my flip cups. One, two, and three. I went a little crazy on that brown, <laughs> which was a little bit unfortunate. So now, let me get some stir sticks here. Also, um, I want to stir this up pretty good. Have you ever done a paint pouring and when you stretch it all out, you find a little spot where the paint seems to have separated from the canvas, it, like it didn't stick to the canvas there. That's probably, or one of the reasons could be that um, you had a big glob of silicone oil and didn't stir it up. So that big glob went down and touched the canvas and now the paint won't stick to it. So if you don't mix it up enough, you'll get... It'll, it'll stick, or it won't stick. I'm sorry. I was thinking about my paint sticks. <laughs> sorry. So I'm just gonna stir this up real good. I haven't used the coconut oil before, but I've had it and I wanna give it a try. So, uh, now let's mix up the brown. So for this one, I think I'm gonna layer the paints and then I think I mixed up twice as much paint as I needed for this. So I have another 16 by 20. And after this, I'll probably do a dirty pour and see how that comes out. All right, mix this up real good here. And depending on how this coconut oil works, I'll either use and try the coconut oil again or I'll use my spot on treadmill oil. but I thought this might be kind of a fun. I really liked the results that Julie Cutts got pouring your heart out. Again, want to give her a shout out because I'm using her colors and everything. She uses glue and water a lot too. My proportion's a little bit different than hers, but I have different paints than she uses. So that's to be expected, right? All right, so that's all painted, uh, all mixed up. Let's layer our cups. Again, they've just been sprayed with a little bit of the silicone. And so I'm probably gonna do two layers. So I wanna get about half. One. Let me move these a little closer so I can just kinda pour it down the line. 
So for my 20 ounces of paint, I have about three and a third cup, three and a third ounces of each color. So for this layer, I'm just going to kind of drizzle it on top. So the, the idea here is that with a layered pour, I want the paints to sit on top of one another and not drop down and combine in the cup. I want them to kind of float on top of one another in the cup in layers. That's all that that means. And so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to try and layer them so that they don't mix together too much in the cup itself. And with the next one, I'm going to pour them in straight in, kind of from a high height, so that they kind of do, do mix together in the cup. And that's a dirty pour or maybe a waterfall pour. I'm not sure what the correct terminology is, but I'm not layering it as much. So another half of this. My white, I can tell, is a little bit thicker than my other colors. You can usually tell that by how, when you're stirring them, you can feel if they're thick or thin compared to the other paints. And you just get a feel for that after you've been doing it for a little while. Kind of the beachy sand color here. Get this all layered in. And I love this teal color. I love blues and browns together anyways, but I think I like turquoise and teals and browns better than even like your typical cobalt blue or halo blue. I think I really love the teals and browns better. Okay, now for the second layer, I'll use up the rest of this paint. I know it's not very exciting watching this, but if you haven't poured before and you don't know what it means to layer your cup versus a dirty pour, then this is kind of useful information. But if you don't need to know this, just fast forward on through. <laughs> okay, get all that out of there. I'm interested to see. I hope the coconut serum works out well. Cause that'll be kind of a fun another thing that you can get a hold of a little bit easier at like a CVS um, and do these while you're staying at home and quarantining we've got the stay-at-home orders now until May 15th so if you're looking for something kind of fun to do with some paints you can get you can get acrylic paints just about anywhere and these are just student grade quality so they're not like super artist quality, like Liquitex or Artist Flow or something like that. Or something, I'm trying to do a few with things that you could get, parents, <laughs> that are now having to act as teachers and entertain their kids and things like that. So, trying to be mindful of that and not use all artist grade stuff, just stuff you can find. The egg carton pour was really fun and really simple. And I think the kids would really like it. And this glue and water you could use for any technique. Oh, I love turquoise and brown. This is just straight turquoise. And the, um, the teal is one that I mixed up. But this just comes as is. But you can even have fun with your kids mixing up the colors, becoming mad scientists. Hey, let's mix up some different colors. Red and blue make purple, and red and yellow make orange. You can just have some fun with it while you're being creative. All right, we're almost done with this tedious task. Thank you for bearing with me here. Oops, I think I threw that popsicle stick out Look for the white here. I only used one popsicle stick because it's the same color. <laughs> All right. 
I like these kind of clear cups too because I can kind of see if I've got roughly the same amount of paint in each cup or if I've gone a little short on one. There we go. I don't know, Julie Cuts makes it look so easy. Everything she does turns out so beautiful. <laughs> I, I don't always get those beautiful results, but I have fun trying. But I've learned so much from her that I thought, I mean, that's how I learned everything that I've done. Now I've done this for about a year, paint pouring, and it was just by watching YouTube, and she was one of my favorite teachers. She really shares all of her information freely and completely and thoroughly. So if you're trying to learn how to um, paint pour, I mean, of course, I'm trying to show you too and explain everything, but she's really good. She's been doing it for about three years as compared to my one. So you can always watch her. She may have, she's got a lot more videos than I do, but it's always good to give one another a shout out, I think, on all the different social platforms. Because we all help one another and learn from one another and inspire one another. And All right, so I'm almost done with having to fill this awkward silence of the boring layering the cups. So you don't have to hear me ramble on. We can get down to it. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, I just splooged on myself right up my arm. So it doesn't matter if I wear gloves if I get it right up my arm. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What I do, I am a messy pourer. Okay, so now I've just rubbed it in real good. <laughs> Welcome to my world. All right, let's flip these babies. One. Two, three, and four. Rub this in real quick. All right. I'm going to let that sit for just a minute. I shouldn't have to wait too long since I sprayed a little bit of the silicone. See now, you might not be able to see, but I can see that it's releasing from the cup. Whereas if I didn't spray that silicone, see, can you see where I hope you can see? It's not too far away, but I can see that it's released from the cup now. And so that's what's kind of nice about spraying the silicone oil in. But, I mean, fair warning, it smells. It's got a lot of vapors and fumes, and so I don't do it unless I can open the windows. And do it right kind of by the window. <laughs> all right, so I can see that um, it's released from my cup. I can see the paints all the way down here. So I'm going to lift it and pull. Okay, because I don't want it to all go off the edge there. I want it to come down here. And actually, let's come over this way. Kind of get this corner. Kind of get this corner. There, um, let's do this one now. Oh, I can already see caterpillars, that's not good. I really try to pull it quick, but I'm always gonna get a lot up there. <laughs> And see how completely it's released from the cup. And last one. Come up here. And do this corner maybe a little. So other than poor execution, <laughs> got some really big. Maybe that's because of the silicone on the side of the cup. I'm not sure. Because I haven't done that in a long time because it's been cold in Michigan. All right, there's my four cups of the layered paint. 
This does not have very much paint, so I think I'm going to start by tipping down that way. Um, why aren't, I guess these are still a little wet from yesterday's pour. Okay, I turn this around so that I can kind of start tipping down this way a little bit. Starting to get it a little bit off the edge there, and I don't want to lose too much, so right there. Go back over this way. And come down there to that corner. And come back this way. So now Oh, I need to come down a little bit and get it over this edge here to side. Okay, just wanted to get it tipped over there. Okay, now I'm going to turn it around. I already have some cells, kind of a lot from, and I haven't even torched from this coconut oil, and that's okay. All of that has to do with how thick your paints are and everything. All right, let's do a little bit of torch in here. Hold it up nice and high. Oh. There we go. Oh my goodness. Keeping it up high, little baby circles. It's popping um, air bubbles too. But you apply the heat to react with the oil, to get the oil to rise up through the paint. Going back over it one more time here. That's what I'm looking for, right there. But I haven't gotten any. I got a little bit there, so maybe I need to get a little bit closer. I'm not sure. There we go. I just want to start a little high and I can go down low if I need to. I kind of like that streaky area with not a lot, so I don't think I'm going to go back in there. Okay. I like these and those and those. I guess I got a big cluster there. I might have gotten a little too close. I purposely didn't come back here because I kind of like that way those colors kind of flowed so I might leave that stripe. I can always go back in and add more cells but here I got some good cells so they're all kind of small right now but now I'm going to stretch and tilt back the other way. Maybe if my cups will let go. Okay nope this one didn't let go yet. What a pain. All right so I'm just going to kind of go back and forth because I want to try and open them up a little while I'm rocking it down this way. There we go. <laughs> I've got the last cup to drop off. And by rocking it back and forth, oops, you got to kind of pay attention to the weight of the paint. I don't want it to go off the edge yet because I don't want it to really, because this side hasn't, this right down here has not really move forward. So I think I need to come back down here a little bit so I get some of the weight of the paint there and try and go 
down a little now. Back and forth. And back over the edge because it's being a little stubborn. Okay? And forth. I didn't quite get it over the edge there either on this side, did I? Was not really paying attention. Half the battle's the tilt. These colors are kind of nice. Okay, there we go. But see, I, I probably should go all the way over and get the, so those cells don't stretch out too weird. All right. And now maybe I can finish getting it over the edge. <laughs> I'm struggling here. All right. So we'll go down here. I was already down there. I don't know why I didn't go over the corner. There we go. And let's go back this way. I'm really feeling awkward because I want to show you what I'm doing. But I know I don't have the best angle for this. And then I'm actually having a hard time seeing because I'm pointing it. Okay. I don't want to ruin these cells down here. They're very pretty. So I want to bring the paint down so they all move together and not get stretched out in some really weird way. And now tilt it this way. Okay, I barely have enough paint and I thought I got plenty of paint. Right off the edge there. Okay, and now let's bring that back a little. Oh, this is kind of pretty. Very beachy. It is pretty beachy. I like it. I squished them a little bit there. I wonder if I should just... No. Why don't I just leave it alone? Leave it alone. If you have to think twice about whether you should tilt it some more or not, stop. <laughs> because I've ruined many a painting where I was like, oh, let me just get this one little area. After, I mean, I know I don't have a lot of paint left. It was moving pretty slow. So that's a pretty good indication that I should stop. All right. So let me just wipe my hands off here real quick. And then I can bring you in for some close-ups of this kind of beachy wave. Beachy scene, I should say. Very soothing. I like it a lot. Um, the cells are decently shaped. Maybe I will try the next... Well, no, I'll keep with the, the coconut serum so I can have a true apples to apples layered cup versus flip cup look at some of these really pretty little cells i like how i've got beautiful white rings around them multiple colors there's enough of a background that makes me feel like it's beachy it's not 100 percent cells i've got some of that background in there um Look, I really wanted to leave this as a background to some of the cells. I didn't want to um, create too many cells in there because I like that kind of stripey, gives it a sense of motion. And then I have all of these cells up here. So I like this. I did have to go in twice with the torch because I started off really high. I wasn't sure how the coconut oil was going to react. So... Um, and I didn't want to get too close. I didn't really get any caterpillars. I was afraid I was going to when I did my initial first, like, flip and drag. Oh, it's kind of neat, guys. I like it. 
So that doesn't have as many cells either, but then up here I do. So I kind of like the composition, how it worked out. <laughs> didn't mean to, but okay, so I've got kind of a background here with my cells here. And that kind of flows up to here. I've got a background here and then cells here. Well, over here, I've got the background here and cells here. So that kind of offsets nice. I got the cells, background, background, cells, cells, background. And then for the fourth cup, I kind of have cells all the way across, or at least more evenly. I've got cells there and here, and then just a kind of bit of a, a background there. So pretty happy with it. I hope you liked this little experiment. And um, I will be doing a dirty pour with the same colors. I got them all mixed up, exact same colors over here. I mixed up extra paint and uh, we'll just see what kind of different results we get. So thank you for watching everyone. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would love it. And until we meet again, have fun painting everyone. Bye-bye.